Hello everybody, Drifty here from Driftwood Gaming, and this is the Special Request RPG Maker MV Tutorial. And I have a question here that says, would you mind if I ask a suggestion on how to set up a party leader buff? I mean, for each actor I set as leader, it gives a different buff to the team, like 20% more HP, resist the status elements, HP, MP, TP, regen, um, etc. So um, let me show you how uh, you can set up a party buff a party leader buff so um, you specified you wanted to only have one of them active at a, at a time so I'm going to show you the skills real quickly so Mia's leader state is going to give 10% to the whole party's defense magic defense and a 5% HP regen to the whole party so that's on <clears throat> if we look at the next one Drifty's leader states gives, is going to give 20% attack and TP regen plus 5% to the whole party so let's see if we can use both of them well, we could, but now we only have one. Let's look at the next one. Hellraiser's leader state adds 20% agility and poison immunity to the party. We add that one. We still only have one. Uh, Isai's leader state is going to give 10% attack, 10% max HP, and stun immunity to the party. Let's do that. So, um, as you can see, uh, when you use one state, it's erasing the other. So let's use these in battle. I also want to show you one more thing from Hime Works, the um, this, the toggleable states. It's pretty cool. So if we use this, uh, we're, we're already in a size uh, state, so we can just have him guard. <clears throat> but if we want to switch to Hellraiser's leader state, well, see, now we're, we should get an agility boost, and you should uh, be able to see a difference in the ATB bar's color change when you have an agility boost that increases that. Plus, our maximum HP will go uh, back down, so it'll look like our HP is filled up again. And here's the um, toggleable state, um, the aggressor state. So basically, this is going to enhance your attack by 50%, but it reduces your defense and magic defense by 20%. So if we use that, and you can see that uh, we have our agility buff now. Our HPs went back down. So the states, uh, the, the leader buff states are working. And the, this way we don't have to program it so that uh, you have one person in, the, in the, the top spot. It just has one leader state active at a time. So if we use this one, we'll notice we'll start regenerating. So we have our aggressor state on. So now that Mia's got this, you can see the plus 40. She got 40, uh, the whole party has a regen effect now. So we should be seeing that. I want to show you this uh, aggressor state. So we have the aggressor state on, but if we use it again, it'll just turn it off. Really cool for situations where you need to sacrifice your defense for a little bit of extra damage or something. And you can see that we're, we are regenerating. So everything seems to be working within this battle. And let me show you how I did all that. And as always, this is a template for you to change for your leaders. You're going to change the names and the descriptions and everything for your game. And uh, there's more than one way to do this. This is just the way that I figured it out. <clears throat> so we'll start off with the leader states. You're going to create, before you do the skills, we're going to have to create some states. So we're going to create uh, your first player's leader state, or you can call it whatever you like. But you, you probably want to put the name so you know who it's, it's allocated to. And the second players, the third players, and the fourth players. Uh, you're going to create a state. Everything can be uh, left the same. You can uh, choose to have this toggle toggleable if you want to. Um, that'll be mainly for the aggress aggressor one where you need it to be toggle toggleable. <laughs> uh, in the traits, uh, here's where you're going to specify. And on the skill is when you're going to have it select all the parties. So you just make the state here and uh, the effects you want for the first, the effects you want for the second, the third, and the fourth. So once you have all your states created, uh, the aggressor state will be uh, an uh, attack bonus, so times 150%, and then you're going to sacrifice some other stats for that bonus. And make sure you put this command in toggleable states. I'm going to put a link below where you can get the Hemiworks plugin for toggleable states. Really cool plugin. Um, so once we've got our states created, we need to go to our common events and create some common events. So you're going to need one switch for every character who's going to have a leader state. So in this case, we have four. So I've got four switches. So in the first player's case, I'm just going to uh, call it off as the names in my game, but you can change them later. 
So Mia's leader state is turning on a switch called Mia's leader state and is turning off all of the other uh, leader states. If you have more than four, which you can do, just return uh, return all these as false. You're going to turn off all of the switches uh, for all of the characters, but turn on the switch for uh, the character who's using that skill. And then you're going to create another common event. So this one's going to be a conditional uh, uh, conditional common event. Basically, you're going to make conditional branches for each uh, player's state. So for every player you have, you're going to have another conditional branch that's this big. But um, keep in mind that you're going to have to have an additional uh, entire party remove leader for each uh, party. So we have four, right? If we had five, then we would have another conditional branch, and each one of these condi conditional branches would have four uh, arguments in it. They would have four things uh, that it's doing. It would uh, turn off all the, the other buffs. So let's look at the first one. So we're going to go right click insert new conditional branch. We're going to select that first switch. And in that first switch, we're going to say if that switch is on, do this with no else handler. Inside of that, we're going to right click insert new. We're going to change state and we're going to add, uh, or we're going to uh, select uh, entire party and we're going to remove all of the other states that, um, that you've created. So in this case for four, I would, and this is Mia's buff, so we're not going to remove Mia's buff because this is hers. But we're going to remove Drifty's leader buff, Hellraiser's leader state, his size leader state, all of them. Um, except for the person who, uh, who called on that one. In this case, it was Mia's leader. So if Mia's leader state is on, remove all the other states. Uh, the same thing is going to apply for the next one. If Drifty leader state is on, which means we, call, we use the ability with, from Drifty, which did the same thing, but it turned on Drifty's leader state and turned off all the other switches. At the end of that, we're doing a calling a common event right uh, here under flow control on all of these. So you can see the, the process of what's going on. You're using a skill that's calling on a common event, and the common event is turning on a switch for the person who used the skill, and is turning off all the other uh, switches, and then calling on the common event, which is our conditional statement. So uh, once you do, uh, once you've done the first one, you're going to repeat that process for the second one. So if Drifty's leader state is on, uh, remove a uh, change state uh, by removing a state from the entire party of every other state that you you have in this system. So when Drifty's is on, we're remo we are removing Mia's leader's state, Hellraiser's leader state, Isai's leader state. And then we're going to create another one right underneath that. If Hellraiser's leader state is on, we're going to remove all those. So you guys can see the process of what's going on here. And if, you, if this is confusing, just leave a comment in, uh, below where you need help with and I'll, I'll help you out. So um, like I said, you can add more states if you want to. Uh, more characters. I mean, you probably would have more than four in your game. So this would be a little bit bigger, but I've made it this small to simplify it so you understand the process. And then you can just go through the legwork of copy pasting. Remember to copy paste as much as you can. So if I wanted to create another state, I wouldn't start by doing another conditional branch. I would just copy this and I would paste it underneath here. And then I would change this one to a different state saying um, uh, Stormy's leader state. I would make a switch for her. And then if that one's on, then we're going to do this. And then I would turn off uh, Mia's leader state, Drifty's leader state, uh, and also I would turn off uh, Isaiah's leader state. Remove. Uh, oops, it should be the entire party, sorry about that. Isaiah's leader state down here. And then I would also copy, uh, I would get one more, now that we have a fifth one, we have to add one more in each one of these. So I would go over here, copy this one. Remember, copy paste is your friend. And now we're just going to edit this one to, to remove Stormy's leader state, which I haven't created, but it would be there. And you would just copy paste this into all of those. So you would remove Stormy's leader state from all the other ones except for Stormy. Uh, hopefully that makes sense. So once we've done that, we're going to do one more thing. We're going to go to our skills. So now we need to create a skill for each of the, the leader states. So Mia's leader state, give it a name, an a icon, description, let the player know what buffs it's going to be adding. Put it in the correct skill type. If, if you notice that all of my characters have different skill types, so for Mia's leader state, it's a skill. For Drifty's, it's Intachi. For Hellraiser, it's in Morph, and so on. 
so make sure you allocate them appropriately. Uh, the scope is going to be all allies. In the occasion, I would just say always, but you can put it battle screen if you want to. If you make it a changeable state, then always will work too, because you can just turn it on and off. I don't know why you'd want to have uh, no state when you can have buffs, but you know the option's there for you. Um, the MPTP cost is up to you. I'm leaving it as zero just because it's like a passive bonus, but it gives the player customization over their party, and uh, at times you would change it. Like when you know that the boss is going to use a really, really strong move, um, and you sometimes it, even at full HP it might wipe the party, you might want to put this one on so you have that extra 10% max HP just to survive with like 10 HP or something. So that could work. Or if you have, uh, you know something's going to be poisoning you, you might put this on so your whole party is immune to poison. Uh, this is a really, really great idea. Thank you so much for suggesting it. Um, one thing you need to do, um, make sure you can give it a custom animation. Uh, I went with certain hit because you, know, you, you wouldn't want to have to evade your own state. Um, and then give it whatever message or required that you like. But you need to add state in the effects. So right click, insert new, go to state, and add the appropriate state. So we've set the scope to all allies. Um, and now for me as state, we would go to state, add state, go down to the appropriate one. So this would be adding me as leader state, 100%. And then we need to do one more thing. We need to call in the common event that we created, that's me as leader state. So the first player is leader state. So we're adding the state to the whole party, and we're calling on the common event that does this, turns on this switch, turns off all the other switches. Um, one other thing, um, and at the end of this it calls the common event that will remove all the other states. When we add another character, we wouldn't just edit this like I showed you. You would have to do one more thing. You would have to turn off that switch uh, in, uh, so in, in all of the, the common event calls for the skill. So I would also go here and do uh, control switches, turn off uh, Stormy's switch right here and you would create a new common event for Stormy basically you would copy paste this right in here and in Stormy's event you would turn on Stormy's switch and turn off all four of these switches in her event so hopefully that helps you guys um, leave your comments below if you have any more questions or suggestions remember to like, favorite, share and subscribe if you want uh, more content um, you guys are awesome we'll see you guys in the next tutorial